Greetings, Ian from RTO here. Welcome to another Marathon Wednesday. Um, today we're doing part three of the Jeff Lynn story. So we've reached the magnificent Electric Light Orchestra. Um, formed in Birmingham, 1970. By Jeff Lynn, Roy Wood and Bev Bevan. They recorded their first ELO album at the same time as they was recording their last Move album. Uh, after Roy Wood left, Jeff Lynne carried on, uh, arranged, produced every album, wrote nearly all the original material. Um, for their first part of it, it was lit Jeff Lynne Bev Bevan and Richard Tandy who had appeared on a Move album were the consistent members. Um, it, they've been described as a fusion of Beatlesque, which is a fair comment. Um, but, but by 1986 I think Jeff Lynne had had enough so he disbanded the group. Bev went on to form ELO Part 2 with Kelly Grouch, Kutch and Mick Kaminsky and Lewis Clark. Uh, there was a little uh, reunion in 2000 and then they come back strong in 2014. I mean, I've, seen, I've seen ELO in 1986 at the Heartbeat and I also saw um, ELO part two a couple of times and both times all, all the whole gigs I mean I love ELO too because they just played great music I love ELO to bits one of my favourite bands of all time um, been a fan since about the age of 10 uh, and I love their albums every one of them um, I just have them in a disorder so we're going to look at 15 albums today so let's get a crack in so coming in at number 15, we go to 1980 for the soundtrack of the film Xanadu. The music was featured on here, was done by Olivia Newton-John and of course ELO, uh, released in June of 1980. And well, there goes an LP off the thing. I might do when you do live recordings. Um, Jeff Lynn on the vocals, Beth Bevan on the drums, Richard Tandy on the piano and synthesizers, and Kelly Grouchka on the bass guitar. First side of the album is purely Olivia Newton John. Uh, the only song I really like on that is the first one, Magic. Uh, lovely song. Um, but suddenly, dancing, suspended in time when you're ever away from me, not my cup of tea. Um, very rarely play this side of the album but when we go to side two I play it quite a lot because it's got some great tracks on it first track that's from from ELO on here is I'm Alive that classic sound from the 80s late 70s early 80s ELO fantastic track like that one a lot then we get The Fool now this is a track that's probably a bit forgotten about it's okay, but I wouldn't say it, it rings classic ELO, but it's pleasant enough. Then we get a really nice song called Don't Walk Away. One of them lovely ballady songs from ELO. Fantastic track. All Over the World. We all know that one. Classic song from ELO. Um, still played to this day when Jeff Lynn tours. Superb track, uh, and the last track on the album is the title track Xanadu. And I love this. Features Olivia Newton John on the vocals as well. Uh, classic song. Love best album, best song on the album. Okay, I only listen to the one side, uh, and I love the ELO contribution to this soundtrack. And for that reason, I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of 4.5. Okay, then coming in at number 14, we go to the 11th studio album, released in 1986, Balance of Power. It's the last album that co-founder Bev Bevan drums on, uh, the last album to 
feature Richard Tandy as well in an official capacity until 2019. So we've got Jeff Lynn on the vocals and every other instrument you can think of. Uh, Bev Bevan does the drums and percussion of course and Richard Tandy sequencing and keyboard sequencing on an ELO album. Mm. Okay, first track. Only Heaven Only Knows. It's not a bad track. Nice little opener. Quite quirky. Nothing wrong with that one. Uh, second track. So Serious. Again, I like this one. Very catchy, quirky. Nice little lick. Uh, great tune from Jeff. Um, getting to the point. Uh, it's not too bad. It's pleasant to listen to. There's nothing bad about it. But I wouldn't jump for joy for that one. Uh, Secret Lives. This is too 80s for me. It's too much of that 80s sound. So I'm not particularly keen on that one. It's all right. Uh, a bit of a mediocre track. A bit of a filler I think. Uh, but it has got a very very good uh, uh, guitar solo from Jeff. Excellent stuff. Um, sorrow about the to uh, sorry sorrow about to fall. Again, it's very eighties poppy. Uh, but what I don't like on this track is saxophone. Give me a violin, give me a cello. Don't give me a saxophone. Without someone, it's not too bad. Again, very it's listenable. Got some nice harmonies. That's not too bad at all. Call in America. Okay, this is a bit poppy, but I like this one. It's quirky. Got a catchy tune. Nice chorus. Very good song. Um, Endless Lies. Again, it's, I'm a bit out on the fence with this one. It's okay. I don't skip it, but I... I don't um, particularly a, a great fan of it. Um, the last track, Send It. I'm not keen on this one at all. I just don't get that one. Okay, this album is a bit of a hit and miss uh, to me. Uh, has got some good tracks on it. Uh, it's an album I do play, but not as often as others. But for the tracks I like, I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of 5 out of 10. Okay then, coming in at number 13, we have the 10th album, released in 1983, Secret Messages. Uh, it was the last ELO album that fe featured Kelly Grouchcutt, conductor Lewis Clark and, his, and the full orchestra. And it was the last time that Mick Kaminsky put some tracks down, a track down on an ELO album. But it was only one track, which we'll talk about when we get to it. Um, so we got Jeff Lynn doing the usual stuff. Bev Bevan's here. Richard Tandy, Kelly Grouchcut. And of course, um, Mick Kaminsky on one track. Opens up with the track Secret Messages. I like this track, always have. Uh, it's quite quirky, excellent stuff. Um, Loser Gone Wild. It's not too bad. Um, it's got a good guitar solo in it though. Um, Bluebird. I like this track. It's got that typical uh, Jeff Lynn production on it. So that's alright by me. Although it's not very ELO, it's still a good track. Um, Take Me On and On isn't too bad. Nice guitar work here from Jeff. And the next track, my favourite off the album, uh, Four Little Diamonds. Nice little rock and roll number, quirky. Nothing wrong with that one. Stranger, very good track. Uh, bit of the old style yellow on that, nothing wrong with that one. Danger Head, yeah, another strong track. Proper ELO there. Um, letter from Spain. I don't like this one. Sorry. I know there's people out there that probably do, but I, I, I just find it a bit dull, uh, really. 
Um, train of gold. Again, it's it's okay. It's not brilliant, but it's still listenable. Let me get rock and roll is king. Um, it's not too bad. Um, I do love the violin from Mick Kaminsky on here. It makes makes it a better record than it is. Adds to it, and that's probably why I still like that track. Um, again, another mixed bag from the band. I've sort of really started to lose a little bit of direction or Jeff's running out of ideas I'm not quite sure but it's got some strong tracks on it and for that reason I'll give it an RTO ranking of 6 out of 10 ok then coming in at number 12 now this may be a bit controversial for diehard ELO fans um, we go into 1971 and the debut album, the Electric Light Orchestra, or you in America, no answer. Uh, it was that it was called that because it after it was under a misunderstood telephone message made by United Artists Records, so they called it No Answer. Uh, it was the only album that featured Steve Woolham and Bill Hunt. So we've got Jeff Lynn on vocals, piano, Moog synthesizer, Roy Wood on vocals and cello and all that good stuff, Bev Bevan on the drums, Bill Hunt on the French horn, and Steve Woolham on the violin. Okay, the first track is the brilliant 10538 Overture. One of my all time favorite tracks by ELO. A lot of people love this track, and I do. Superb track. Um, look at me now. It's okay. It sounds very Eleanor Rigby in places. But on the downside, some of the arrangements are, are bizarre. Experimental. But uh, it's an okay track. I don't mind it. Nelly takes a bow. I find this just a total noise. I just can't get on with it. I have really struggled with this over the years. Uh, I was listening to it the other week and I still can't get into it. Then we get the Battle of Mons Marsden Moor. Uh, this isn't too bad. I like the cello arrangement in here. It's heavy, it's hard pretty cool um, then we get the first movement it's an instrumental I love this track it sort of reminds me of um, classical gas by Mason Williams which is another track I really like um, so I don't mind that uh, Mr Radio good track love the orchestral piece in this really good stuff the Manhattan Rumble. I don't like this track. I think the violin sound out a key. It's all over the place and I just can't get that at all. Um, Queen of the Hours. Very progressive. But it's pretty good. Um, and then we get Whisper in the Night. Like this. Nice vocal from Roy Wood. A really good song. Um, as I said last week, this was recorded at the same time as Message from the Country from the Moon. Um, so you still got that crossover. I still think it was it was. Again, there's tracks on here that should be on a Move album, on the Move album. There was tracks on that Message from the Country that should have been on this. I I I and I've really struggled with this album. I know there's people out there pulling their hair saying why this is brilliant. It's good. Don't get me wrong, I don't dislike this album. I think it's very experimental. But there are some tracks on here that I just can't stand. And it's the only probably the only tracks by ELO that I just don't like. Um But for the tracks that I do like, they are pretty good. So I'm gonna give this an RTO ranking of six point 
five. Okay, then coming in at number eleven, we go to two thousand and one. Uh, to the 12th album Zoom this is the first ELO album since Balance of Power in 1986 um, basically it's Jeff Lynn who does vocals, backing vocals electric guitars, bass, keyboards cello and drums guest musician on one of the tracks is Richard Tandy and Mr George Harrison appears on this on a, on a long time gone and she, all she wanted uh, Richard Tandy appears on All Right Ringo Starr drums on Moments in Paradise and Easy Money Mark Mann appears on a couple of tracks Susie Cat Eaterman on the cello Richard Lelbo's on cello Dave Borg off saxophone Laura Lynn backing vocals on a track Rosie Vella and Chris Wilkinson basically it's Jeff Lynn doing everything apart from the people that I've mentioned so the first track is All Right I uh, love the lovely arrangement the guitar work from Jeff on there is really good nothing wrong with that track Moment in Paradise again a nice track some good guitar work um, State of Mind good track good rock and roll just for love isn't too bad it's pleasant enough to listen to though stranger on the quiet street this is so far away from the ELO tr sound but it's a well produced track um, all on my own time very merged track nice orchestral pretty good um, easy money classic rock and roll uh, do love this track best track on the album it really doesn't matter one of them tracks that Tom Petty George Harrison could have sang on it um, it's a good record Ordinary Dream has got that feel of ELO to it with the strings oh, not bad a long, a long time gone very bluesy jazz guitar on this pleasant song Melting in the Sun solid track nothing wrong with that one All She Wanted solid little rocker awesome lonesome lullaby very good song ok this is a very good album but personally this should have just been put out as a Jeff Lynne um, solo project I know he, I mean, he is such a humble person. He may have thought it wouldn't have sold as a Jeff Lynne album. I think it would have done. So, how I look at this is it's an okay ELO album, but I would say it is a brilliant Jeff Lynne solo album. See, I don't dislike it, I just don't think he should have recorded it under the banner of ELO um, but that we that, that's what he done and I still like the album don't get me wrong I'm not slating this album at all so I'll give it an RTO ranking of 7 out of 10 ok top 10 uh, so starting at the number 10 we have the 14th the most current album uh, released in November 2019 from out of nowhere credited as Jeff Lynn's ELO so on here we've got Jeff Lynn doing practically everything uh, Richard Tandy makes a guest appearance on this um, and then Steve J's tambourine and shakers and mixing excellent stuff so the first track is the title track from out of nowhere nice song catchy catchy tune nice vocal from Jeff here help yourself uh, a typical Jeff Lynn production very good track all my love 
This is a little bit different from Jeff Lynne and ELO, but it's still good. Nothing wrong with that one. Down Came the Rain. Just a great rock and roll track. Nothing wrong with this. Losing You. I like this. This is one of them slower tracks. Uh, it's pretty good. One more time. Love the string arrangement on this. This is what I call ELO. Sci-Fi Woman. Not too bad. Solid track. Um, going Out on Me. A very 1950s style ballad. Uh, very similar to the sort of stuff he did on uh, one of his solo albums. Uh, Time of Our Life, my favourite track on this album, pretty good. Songbird, lovely little track. Nice way to end the album. This is a nice album, but I have got one criticism of it all sounds the same there's no variation on this but that doesn't make it a bad album of course it is a very good higher um good album but this is why this is so light it's just all on the same tone i've got no problem with it but i when you have ELO albums you expect a little bit of variation and there's just no variation on this but i do like the album and i'll play it quite a lot um, but I'll give it an RTO ranking of 7.5. Okay then, coming in at number 9. You go to 2015, 13th album. It was the long-awaited comeback of ELO, Alone in the Universe. Got Jeff Lynn doing practically everything on it. Uh, Steve J's back, Laura Lynn is doing some backing vocals. First track is brilliant when I was a boy. I just love this track. Simple as, great little track. Nice arrangement. Love and Rain, nice song. Reminds me of something off George Harrison's Cloud Nine, uh, but it's pretty solid. Dirty to the Bone, like this track. Good rock and roll, nothing wrong with that one. When the Night Comes, it's okay, I suppose. Not the best one. The sun will shine on you. I'm not a great lover of this song. I just don't get into it. Ain't it a drag? Again, one of them songs that any of the people he's produced could have sung on it. I think Tom Petty would have been a good choice on that one. All My Life, solid track. Nice arrangement, solid track. One Step at a Time. Not my favourite track on the album. It's sit on the fence with that one. And we get the title track, Alone in the Universe. Nothing wrong with this one. Solid track. Very pleasant. Again, it's a good album, but it sounds more like a Jeff Lynn solo or something that he's done for other people. Um, but I don't dislike this album. As I said, I don't dislike any of these albums. Um, but it's not classic ELO enough for me but I do love it and I'll give it an RTO ranking of 7.9 so you can see if it was if it, if it was that bad I wouldn't give it a 7.9 ok then coming in at number 8 got the ninth album released in 1981 Time. Bit of a concept album, this one. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, we have got Jeff Lynn on here, Beth Bevan, Richard Ten Tandy, and Kelly Grouch Cut. Uh, excellent album. Uh, opens up with the prologue. When I think of the prologue, I think of um, Frankie Howard. <laughs> the prologue. Sorry about that, but when I hear that, that's all I think of him saying that. Um, lovely intro to this album. The effects on the vocoder from Jeff is brilliant. And then it goes straight into Twilight. Love this track. I love the modern sound, but it's still got that very ELO feel to it. Great track. Um, Yours Truly, 2095. 
Uh, more the newer sound of ELO, but it's a very solid track. Nothing wrong with that. Ticket to the Moon. Brilliant track. Love Richard Tandy's piano work in this. It is superb. And another stonking vocal performance from Mr. Lynn. Good stuff. Uh, that's the way. That's life. That's start again, Ian. The way life's meant to be. Bit different. Pleasant song, though. Nothing wrong with that. Another Heartbreaks. It's an average song. Got some nice arrangements, but nothing that really hits home for me. Um, Rain is Falling. I like this. Um, I like the um, effects and the rain. I mean, they're very good at this, aren't they? This rain sort of thing. We'll be talking about that later on, but um, I think it's in that vein of a certain album or a certain piece. Just a continuation from that really good track. Um, from the end of the world, to me, it's the weakest song on the album, and I don't particularly like it. Uh, the lights go down again. Not a particular personal favourite of mine. Bit too eighties for me. Um, here is the news. Brilliant, brilliant track. Um, again, some great keyboards, some Mr. Tandy. Really good song. Twenty first century man that mixture of old ELO and new ELO evolving nothing wrong with that track solid as you like um, then we get hold on tight okay everyone loves this it's just, but I do as well very catchy um, I love it when he sings it in French brilliant it's one of my favourite songs by ELO. One of the guilty pleasures of ELO is Hold On Tight. Then we get the epilogue that sort of wanders about a bit. Nothing wrong with it though. Okay, uh, this is that changeover album from that classic sound moving into the 80s. Pretty strong songs on there and I'll play this album a lot. And I'll give this an RTO ranking of 8 out of 10. Okay, I think the light's starting to fall. It's a very miserable day. Let's just put that on there. That's a bit. Got a better way of doing lights in here now. Um, so let's go carry on. Um, coming in at number 7 then. Second album by ELO. Basically called ELL2. Ah. Uh, Last album that Roy Wood would have any input on ELO. First album for Richard Tandy, Mike Edwards, Mike Albuquerque, Wilford Gills, Gibson, and Colin Walker. So the lineup for this album was Jeff Lynn, lead vocals, guitars, synthesizers, Beth Bevan, as ever, on the drums, Richard Tandy, keyboards, Mike de Albuquerque on the bass. Mike Edwards was on the cello. Wilf Gibson was on the violin. Colin Walker was on the cello. Uh, Roy Wood was on the cello. And they say that Hugh McDowell is on here. And Bill Hunt. Okay, the first track on this album is called In Old England Town. Boogie number two. Love this. Very proggy. Love the cellos and the violin on this. Very good track. Then we get Mama. That ELO sound is starting to come through on this uh, track. Great guitar work here and some really good violin. Just what you need. Then we get Roll Over Beethoven. I think this is far better than Chuck Berry's. I love the piano work from Richard Tandy on here. He goes for it. I love the... I mean, on this on the album, you get the longer version, so you've got all that classical da -da -da -da, da -da -da, at the beginning, and then you get Jeff coming in on the guitar. Solid track, brilliant stuff. Um, next track on here is from the Sun to the World Boogie Number One. Again, very proggy, uh, great rock track. Nothing wrong with this one at all. Then we get Kuyama. 
I think that's how you pronounce it. This is just pure prog with strings. Harmonies are brilliant. My favourite track on the album, without a doubt. Uh, it's a very good stuff. Strong album. The ELO sound is coming through. They've turned it into that fantastic global machine. Uh, still not perfect, but when we're getting there, this is quite proggy as well, and I really enjoy this album. So I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of 8.4. Okay, coming in at number six, we go to 1974. Uh, El Dorado, last album for Mike Albuquerque, and it was the first that featured Hugh McDowell. So on here we have got Jeff Lynne, Beth Bevan, Richard Tandy, Mike de Albuquerque, Mike Edwards, Mick Kaminsky, and Hugh McDowell. And Lewis Class, Lewis Clark is on here doing his call and the orchestral and conducting. First track is the El Dorado um, Overture. I just love this. I love that movement of El Dorado. Absolutely brilliant. Then we get my favourite song on the album. Can't get you out of my head. Classic ELO there. Boy Blue. Uh, different sort of arrangement on here, but great stuff. Experimental stuff. All awesome track. Uh, Laredo Tornado. Love guitar work on this. Excellent stuff. Uh, Poor Boy, The Greenwood. Uh, one of the first sort of very short ELO tracks, solid track, excellent stuff. Uh, then we get Mr. Kingdom, not a bad track. Nobody's Childs, again really, really good track, keeps the movement going. Then we get Illusions in G Major, nice bit of rock and roll here. Nothing wrong with this. And then we get El Dorado. And this is where I think that classic ELO sound starts to me with the Eldorado finale. Absolutely brilliant. Epic stuff this is. This is an epic experimental album. Very good. But it's one of those albums by ELO that you have to listen to start to finish. You can't just pick individual tracks on this. I uh, play this a lot. And I'll give this an RTO ranking of 8.5. Okay, coming in at number 5. is the 8th album released in May 1979. Discovery. Uh, the disco sort of album, as I call it. We've got Jeff Lynn on here. Beth Bevan, Richard Tandy. Uh, Kelly Grouch, Kurt. Uh, Louis Clark's on here doing the orchestral arrangements of course opens up with the shine a little love great track Richard Tandy's keyboard work is brilliant there's so much energy with this track classic second track confusion again a classic track I love the these this period of ELO. Uh, great lyrics, great backing vocals from Kelly. Uh, brilliant. Then we get Need Her Love. Good track. I do love Jeff's guitar solo in this. Absolutely brilliant. Then we get my favourite track on the album. The Diary of Horace Wimp. I think this is pays a little bit of homage to Eleanor Rigby. Very similar sort of story. Uh, but I love this song. Just can't get it. It's so uplifting. Brilliant. Great uh, backing vocals. Great arrangement. Superb stuff. Then we get Last Train to London. Love that bass line. Kelly Garrett's cut. Brilliant. I love this song, 
but I don't like it when other bands sample it, i.e. Atomic Kitten. How dare they? Great track though. Midnight Blue. Lovely keyboard, some Richard Tandy on this. Another stunning vocal performance from Jeff Lynn. Superb stuff. On the Run. Great. Got a real disco feel to this one. Um, but what I love about this is the harmonies and then that when it goes from that real energy song to this slow harmonies. Brilliant stuff. Let me get wishing. I'd say this is probably the weakest track on the album I think it just meanders along a little bit too long and the album ends up with the brilliant brilliant Don't Bring Me Down absolute stonking rock track love it uh, solid album uh, childhood memories when this first came out I played it to death um, still play it to death I'll give it an idea ranking of 9 out of 10 ok coming in at number 4 go to 1973 on the third day last appearances of Colin Walker on the cello uh, and Wilfred Gibson and it's the first album that Mick Kaminsky played on so we have got Jeff Lynne, Bev Bevan, Richard Tandy, Mike Albuquerque, Mike Edwards, Mick, Kompi Mick, Mick Kompi Kaminsky, sorry, Colin Walker and Wilford Gibson. First track, Split Up, it's called Ocean Breakup, King of the Universe. Very progressive. Good track though, especially when it did that broke in the middle. Awesome stuff. Uh, Bluebird is dead. Love the keyboards from Richard Tandy on this. Very good guitar work from Jeff Lynn on this as well. Oh, not. Oh no, not Susan. Still a little bit progressive, but of course it sounds great. New World Rising with an Ocean Breakup reprise. Another great track. New the um, orchestral arrangement on um, New World Rising is just phenomenal. Then we get a classic, of course, Showdown. What more can you say about that track? Except that it's brilliant. Then we have Daybreaker. This is my favourite track on the album. It's my favourite instrumental. Richard Tandy's keyboard work is fantastic on here. And I love that chunky guitar from um, Mr. Lynn classic track um, then we get Marmar Bell another classic track love the guitars at the beginning of this it's just brilliant uh, then we get Dreaming of 4000 another great track still very progressive excellent track and then we get a rendition of Grieg's in the Hall of the Mountain King love this piece of immersion music and I think ELO do a stonking job on it uh, I'd say this is probably the last of that progressive sort of feel to an ELO album very good album and I'll give this an RTO ranking of 9.3 um, coming in at number 3 then we got to the top 3 this was hard well 3 and 2 was one wasn't <laughs> Um, so we go to the fifth album, released in 1975, Face the Music. First album for Kelly Grouch Cut and Melvin Gaye. So we have Jeff Lynne, Bev Bevan, Richard Tandy, Kelly Grouch Cut, Mick Kaminsky, Hugh McDowell and Mervyn Gale. That orchestral, solid orchestral trio. Brilliant. First track. Fire on High. Great instrumental, of course. Lots of that. Um, great cello and violin from Mick Kaminsky. Very, very good. Um, waterfall. 
love this track. Love the string arrangement on it. It's superb. Uh, then we get my, one of my favourite tracks, and a classic, Evil Woman. We don't have to talk too much about that one, do we? We all love that one. Uh, Night Rider. Another of them mellow classics from the band. Great drumming from Bev on that. Great track. Poker. Another of those little rockers from the yellow. Superb stuff. Uh, then we get the brilliant Strange Magic. Another classic song from uh, ELO. Um, I think with the, what I like about ELO, that these tracks, they are some of them are overplayed, but you don't mind that because they are they're played for a reason, as I say, because they are great tracks. Strange Magic is one of them. Uh, then we get Down Hometown. Weakest song on the album. Not a great fan of that one. Then on a summer dream, solid track to end the album. This album has got some great uh, classics on this, uh, uh, but then again, there are some tr tracks that are a little bit weak. But I love the album. There's enough on here to put it at number three. So I'll give you an RTO ranking of nine point four. Okay, coming in at number two. This is the first album I really heard by ELO. From 1976, October. A new world record sixth album. This features that solid, what I'd say, the dominant force of ELO. Jeff Lynne, Bev Bevan, Richard Tandy, Kelly Grouchcott, Mick Kaminsky, Hugh McDowell and Marvin Melvin Gay. First track, Tightrope. ELO are coming into their own now. That sound is absolutely fantastic. That definitive sound of ELO is there. Great track. Then we get, of course, the brilliant telephone line. I love this track. Awesome. And we don't stop there. Next track, Rockaria. Again, great, great track. Kelly Grout Kutch's vocals are absolutely awesome on this. I remember when I saw ELO Part 2, obviously Kelly was part of the band, and he hit them notes on this absolutely spot on. Wonderful track. Uh, then we get Mission, a new world record. Quite funky, great guitar, I mean keyboard stuff from Richard Tandy on that, awesome stuff. So fine, uh, another solid track, great harmonies, one of the lesser known tracks on this album, uh, but it's fantastic. Then we get the brilliant Living Thing, okay, everyone loves this, it is one of my favourite tracks by the band, I just love that plucking violin from Mick Kaminsky, just adds to something to this really special song. Above the Clouds, again one of them forgotten tracks, but it is absolutely brilliant. Then we get Do Ya. Now ELO must be the only band to have actually done a recover of one of their own songs under a different name. Obviously The Move have done this, and then Jeff Lynne took it on a bit more, because he wrote it, and done a great track. I love both versions. The move one, as I said last week, is more rocky and heavy, but with the strings on this, it adds to it. And the last track on here is the brilliant Shangri-La. One of them forgotten tracks, but it is such a brilliant track. Love the guitar work on this. To me, this is a mini Greatest Hits album on itself. Uh, it's got so many brilliant tracks on it. It is just a brilliant album. Um, so I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of 9.5. Well, if you haven't guessed, and I think everyone, this is everyone's favourite ELO album, without a doubt. Uh, so we're going to the seventh album, released in 1977. Last time that we have Hugh McDowell and Mervyn Gay, Gale on cellos. It is the fantastic, brilliant, out of the blue. 
I had this for Christmas 1977 and I love this album from that day on and it is probably one of my favourite albums of all time uh, on here we have got Jeff Lynne, Bev Bevan, Richard Tandy Kelly Grouch, got Mick Kaminsky um, Hugh McDowell and Elvin Gale uh, that's there's not a bad track on this album. It's brilliant from start to finish. Opens up with the brilliant, brilliant turn to stone. What can you say about this? Except that it's awesome. I love that bit when it all speeds up. Seeing them do that live is quite fun because once they've done it, you sort of go, they all look at each other going, yay, we done it. Uh, brilliant opener for this album. Then we slow right down for a bit of It's Over. Another brilliant track. Love the harmonies on this and I love the strings. It is just so powerful. Sweet Talking Woman. Mick Kaminsky's greatest performance in ELO. Stonking track. Cross the Border. Again, Hugh McDowell, Mervyn Gay, brilliant on this. That's then the trio of the strings, lovely on this. Again, Richard Tandy's work is brilliant. Great track. Side two then. Night in the City, great riff at the beginning, of course. Just a fantastic track. You don't just put this album on and play a few songs. You put the whole damn thing on. Because there's only one way to play this. Starlight. Again, the orchestral on this is fab. Uh, then we get the quirky, brilliant jungle. Including the tap dancing. Fantastic stuff. Then we get that little... Uh, Brilliant instrumental bit with the vocal effects. Believe me now, stunning. Only one word to describe that track, stunning. Um, then, of course, we get Stepping Out. I love the harmonies on this. Magic track. Side three. Concerto for a rainy day. the best thing about this album but that doubt this makes this album what it is we open up with that brilliant standing in the rain ah remember when I saw ELO 2 they opened up with this <laughs> awesome um, I love Richard Tandy's keyboard solo at the beginning of this it's just brilliant, the harmonies are great then you get Kelly Grouch cut vocal that real high vocal brilliant way up to open up uh, this piece uh, and then we get Big Wheels of course, again brilliant adds to the atmosphere and I just love the the rock and rolly bit with the keyboards and then you get the strings coming in here. It's just fantastic. Summer and Lightning just carries on that big wheels feel. Oh, it gives me goosebumps just thinking of this. It, it is just brilliant. The harmonies are just fab. And then to top it off, the best feel-good record ever written, Mr. Blue Sky best bit of this though is that bit at the end the bit that they always cut off on the radio that ilk instrumental bit such a bringing piece and it builds up and builds up and then it goes very quietly and ends fantastic side and a fantastic piece of music 20 minutes worth of pure genius from Jeff Lynn okay the last side side four Opens up with Sweet is the Night. 
another of those little quirky electric like orchestra songs great keyboards from Richard Tandy and then we get the whale Richard Tandy comes into his own here uh, brilliant work from Richard Tandy Hugh McDowell Ma, Ma, Melvin Gale and Mick Kaminsky one of the highlights of the album then we get the Birmingham Blues great little rock track love that and the album ends up with the fantastic Wild West Hero probably got some of the best harmonies you'll ever hear on a rock record it's just beautiful I love that as I said this is remind this is my favorite album one of my favorite albums probably one of my favorite albums of the 70s got the album got the CD wouldn't be anywhere in the world without this always listen to this when I'm on holiday on a beach on the iPod now I just have well 90 don't know how long it is but I just float away and just enjoy this so I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of course 10 out of 10 every day of the week it's just brilliant I love this album okay uh, that was a pleasure to do when you do win your favourite bands of all time um, it's just some of the best music around I mean you know I love me rock but this is this is just genius stuff okay I'm sure a lot of you have got your own uh, ideas I'd love to see what you guys would put at number one I'd be surprised if anyone else puts anything but out of the blue but I'm sure there are people out there that think other albums are better um, that's all for today um, we'll be back tomorrow uh, we've got then and now and tomorrow we're looking up in my opinion one of the best Brit pop bands from the 90s or late 80s 90s blur and then album artwork tomorrow is going to be the kiss studio albums and then tomorrow we've got an update and I'm gonna do a live one live update tomorrow Around about eight o'clock all depends on what I've got something coming tomorrow all depends what time that gets here of course uh, so that'll be all for tomorrow have a fab day I will see you tomorrow